Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial on the topic of comparing values of two arrays in JavaScript. Now, this is something that we as web developers might often find ourselves needing to do. Uh, one use case for this might be um, whenever we have, let's say, a test or a quiz of some sort, and we get uh, responses from a user, and we want to check uh, how many answers the user got right by comparing uh, their answers to the correct answers which we would store in in an array, right? Um, another use case might be if, let's say, we're uh, validating a, a user to a website and we have some security questions for them to answer. This is this would be essentially the same thing. We would collect those uh, responses in an array and compare each of them um, against the correct answers array. So definitely something that's very useful to know as web developers and uh, let's now jump in and see how it works. All right, so let me just take you through the setup here for our demonstration. So I have only two files in my um, Visual Studio code, index.html, which is this one right here. Now inside this, I only have um, a HTML skeleton with a link to my script. And in my script, currently, I have nothing, all right? And our um, output is going to be right here. I'm using Google Chrome. So let me just open the console. We'll need that. Perfect. So how do we compare two arrays? Let me first get my array data. I have it right here. And I'll just get rid of this. You can see better. Okay, so we have two arrays. The first one is called correct answers, and the second one is called user answers. So our job is to compare basically the user, the array of the user answers against the array of correct answers to see how many answers the user got right. Now, if you look at this, we will see that uh, currently the user has the second question right, so we have B and B, and then the last question is also right. C and C. So currently the user score would be uh, basically two out of six. Okay. Now we can see this visually, but how do we uh, get that answer programmatically? So let's see how we can do that. Uh, we're going to use um, an for each method on our um, array. Now you can do it uh, using a for loop as well, and I might show this to you later also. Um, but Currently, we're just going to stick with the for each method. So we're going to start with our user answers for each. And in here, we're going to take in two arguments. First one is going to be our answer. And we're also going to take in the index. Now, I will um, explain later why we need that. But for now, let's just write this out. I'm going to be using um, an arrow function here. Okay, so inside our for each method, what we want to do is for each element in our user's answers, we want to check uh, the same element uh, in the correct answers array, right? So the element that's in the same position. So we're going to say here, we're going to use an if statement. We're going to say if our answer equals to the correct answers and in here, this is where our index comes in. And again, I'll explain it in a second. Let's just finish writing this first. Then what we're going to do is, for now, we're just going to console, console log. I'm going to say else console log. All right, so let's look through this. Let's think about the logic here. So what we're saying is um, for every element in the user answers array, we're going to check the element that's in the same position in the correct answers array. And we're going to see if they match up, right? If they are the same, if they happen to be the same, that means our answer is correct. And we're going to console log your answer is correct. Otherwise, if they're wrong, we're going to say your answer is wrong. So let's see if this works. 
Okay, so we expect right now um, in our console we want to see basically that two answers are correct and four are wrong. So let's save this. All right, and as you can see, we have here uh, your answer is wrong, the second one is correct, and then the next uh, three answers are wrong, and the last one is also correct. Perfect. So that's exactly what we expect, right? Now, this essentially is it, right? So perhaps I've already answered your question for this video is, you know, how to compare values of two arrays. But I do want to show you a, kind of a slightly more practical way of doing this by um, keeping track of how many answers the user gets right. Because if you think about it, if, if this is a real, let's say, test or quiz, we might want to keep track of the answers, of the correct answers, so we can give um, feedback to the user later on, right? So how would we do that? Well, let's just open this here. So first thing we want to do is we want to initialize um, some kind of a variable that would keep track of our score. So we're going to just call it score. And we want to use let here because the score will change. And for now, we're going to set it to zero. Okay, so to start with, our score is zero. And now here, every time that the user gets the answer right, we want to add to the score. So we're going to add one for now. So we're going to just say here, score plus plus. And we don't actually need the else statement here because the only time that we're going to add to the score is if the answer is right. So we're not going to do anything for the wrong answer. So we're just going to get rid of this again. Okay? Perfect. So let's say this. Well, actually, we're not quite done yet. We want to let's just log out the score uh, after this is all done, right? So right now we should we should have a score of uh, two. So we're just going to say, uh, let's just say you got I'm going to say score questions right. Okay, let's save that. And as you can see here, we have you got two questions right. Perfect. Now, if you want to just play around with it, let's just, let's change the answer to our first question. We're going to say A, which should also be correct. So right now, if we save, we should see you got three questions right. And there we go. Now, normally you would want to output something like this to for the user to actually see. We, we don't just want to console log it, right? So um, how would we do that? Well, let me show you very quickly. Uh, again, this is more directed towards beginners. Um, so if you're a little bit more advanced with JavaScript, you probably know this. But let me just create in my HTML a paragraph tag. And I'll give it an ID of, uh, let's say, result save that and then i have to get a reference to that tag in my javascript so at the very top i'm going to say const result equals to document i'm going to say query selector result okay so i should now have a reference to that p tag and then instead of console logging i'm going to say here well, just I'm going to say result dot inner text equals and I'm going to paste what I wanted to say here. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to say you got something and you know what we might want to add out of how many, right? Because uh, we want to know um, that the, the user got a certain number of questions out of the total. So how do we get the total number of questions? Well, we can just use the length property of our array. So we're going to say you got score question score out of, and here we're going to say user answers dot length, which gives us the number of questions right. Okay, perfect. So we don't need this anymore. So right now, when we save this, we should see we should see the paragraph show up right here in our UI. So let's save it. And we see you got three out of six questions right. And again, if we change this back to the wrong answer, let's say I think we had B, or, uh, B originally, 
or or C, I don't remember, it doesn't matter. We got two out of six questions right. Perfect. So this is working fine. Now, um, as I promised, I, I do want to show you an older way to do this using the for loop as well, uh, just so you have kind of, you know, uh, some options to choose from, really. Although these days, the for each method would probably be the pre preferred option. So let me um, just comment this out and let's do this once more with the for loop. So I'm going to still have my score variable and here I'm going to say for I'm just going to use the shortcut here and I'm going to just say I here okay so for our array we have to reference our array we're going to say user answers array and in here we're going to have something slightly different um, but I'll explain it in a second so again we're going to start with an if statement and this time we're going to say user answers and we need an index here equals to the correct answers oops index as well perfect then uh, we want to do the same thing we want to add to our score so score plus plus Okay, and then at the end, uh, we might as well just copy and paste this. Great. Okay, so let's see what we did here. Now, if, you're, if you've done for loops before, this should be familiar to you. But basically, we're uh, starting up our for loop here. So initially, uh, i is 0. Uh, and then we're saying as uh, as long as i is um, less than the length of our array, we're going to perform whatever's inside here. And then after each loop, we're going to add one to our i. Okay, so and inside here, we're saying that if the element in our user answers, okay, indexed with this index, right, is equal to the same indexed element in the correct answers then we're going to add one to our score and obviously if this is not the case nothing is going to happen right so again we're going to be comparing this element here the first element in this array with the first element of this array the second uh, element here with the second element here etc etc perfect so let's see if this works i'm going to save and see, we have the same thing, right? And just to double check, let's check, change this to, to A again. So we should see three out of six now. And we see three out of six. Perfect. Okay, so I hope you could see that um, there's always, as is usually the case with encoding, there is more than one way to achieve the same thing. Um, again, I would recommend that you use the for each method in this case, but um, once again, just kind of for variety's sake. It's good to know how to do it uh, in more than one way. Um, I think that's it. I'm going to end this video here. I hope you found it useful, and I'll see you in the next video.